going on, Titans Nation? Welcome back to the Glory Day Sports Show. I'm your host, Jake Robertson. Today we're reviewing the dismantling that took place in Indy yesterday as the Tennessee Titans trounced the Colts 45-26 in a blowout headline by a triplet of Derrick Henry touchdowns in the first half. DH2K is officially on notice as he needs to average 149 yards over the final five games of the season to break that 2,000 rushing yard marker, which hasn't been surpassed since all day. Adrian Peterson did so in 2012. Henry averaged 142 yards over that same time span last year, so he only needs seven more yards a game and he will join some elite company. And this next week Cleveland game could make or break that 2,000 yard season as the Browns statistically are a top 10 rushing defense, but they are actually worse than a healthy Colts team like we faced just a couple weeks ago. It's also of note, since drafting Derrick Henry, the Titans have not had a losing season in his young career. Even with the DH2K watch getting the hype, let's not overlook the Titans might have two 1,000 yard receivers as Arthur Juan Kenobi is on a current pace for 993 yards compared to Corey Davis's 964, a feat not achieved since 2004 when Drew Bennett and Derek Mason passed that with the pairing of Air McNair and the forgotten Billy Volick. Also, keep in mind, Davis and Brown both missed two games this season. So without that, the stats would be a no-brainer and they would get there for sure. Especially with Brown as he holds the highest passer rating when targeted since coming into the league last year over the likes of Tyreek Hill. As we continue the records, let's talk about our fearless leader, Ryan Tannehill. He only needs four touchdowns in the final five games to break the Titans single season passing touchdown record set by the flying Hawaiian Marcus Mariota with 26 touchdowns in 2016. But keep in mind, we are going legitimate franchise records. It belongs to George Blanda's 36 touchdown tosses with the Oilers in 1961. On the defensive side of the ball, though, the Titans played downhill and fast yesterday, and I like it. The secondary played so much closer to the line of scrimmage, which just tickled me pink. But... With that comes the risk of giving up the deep ball, and Rivers did go long one or two times, specifically the bomb to T.Y. Hilton. That was almost a fumble near the goal line before being overturned. But I will take the few deep shots down the field opposed to getting a picked apart on third down every week. And my man, Breon Borders, is continuing to show out. I mean, he's no Jonathan Joseph. But I digress. He's fine with the football, and he did have a drop pick, which he would have for sure housed. But he more than made up with it, securing one later in the game. And then there's David Long Jr. Coming in with 90.3 PFF grade, splitting time, but out-snapping the boy, Will Compton, by a few snaps. Which I credit to the Titans getting, big, getting up big and forcing the Colts into passing situations. And that's where Long thrives, and he did that at West Virginia, and that's what we brought him in for. After having Hines work out us over the first game and get off to another hot start in this one, Long was the tone setter, bringing the lumber on Hines after a short catch and run, and then holding him to only 2.9 yards per carry for the rest of the game. But all in all, this was a team effort supplied by the boys in the two-tone blue. But it's time to get ready for the boys from Ohio to come to town. Remember, the Titans only need to go 2-3 and three over these last five games to break that dreaded 9-7 and seven curse placed upon them for the previous four seasons, which most teams would love to have. But that's not what we're here for. We're going from good to great. But that's it for me today, guys. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe below for a chance to win that free signed Corey Davis jersey. Also, follow us on Twitter at Glory Day Sports. But that's it for me. Peace.